notice something. If you're banning Lissandra, that means that a champion starting with A and ending with E. I don't know why that took so long. I'm sorry, guys. Learning to spell today. Just left open for night. They're just willing to give away the Addy again. Yeah, having no qualms, again, is a flex pick. I feel like if they lock in the Lucian, it kind of lowers the amount that, that, you know, we expect it to go down towards that support role. But now for BLG, a failure of something else hitting on 6-0. and oh, Both AD carries have looked incredible on it this split. And then it would be very easy to round out uh, with something for on. You know, if they did just want to go towards like a little themselves and, 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 you know, kind of enable Elk to be that hyper carry. But it would mean that Shun would very much have to get his hands on something with engage so the team would actually be able to start up the fights that they want. Okay, 2v2 getting set out for BLG in the meantime. Elk and On going to be the Ophelia versus Lulu. Pretty standard. Lyric, what I've learned here today are two things. That BLG feel like they have an option going into this and that spelling Annie without the A is very hard. I just sat there and thought, knee. <laughs> I just, I'm like, how am I going to spell the rest of this word? Um, so instead, yeah. I look like an utter idiot as, hey, at least this time, Ruler are Missing going to show us that the Lucian Nami as well can be a threat from their angle. So we're kind of swapping around the tactics from JDG and BLG's bottom lines. Which is really interesting because even though BLG, we said like, hey, it's fallen off a little bit, but Elkanon still were a bot lane that played it. Rulers only pulled that the Lucian wants to split. They have much more heavily leaned on the Zeri, the Aphelios. Hell, they're one of the bot lanes gravitating towards the Caitlyn, Varus, very much in his wheelhouse. But now with this locked in, we have to see where they want to go for their next phase. I mean, junglers still left open. And it feels yep. like there's so many available. That's why we don't see either team really looking to pinch out the jungle role. Again, I mean, Rika uh, Lee Sin, Wukong, Vi, Sejuani, just so many things available for either side to go with that unless they both use both bands on it, that it'd be really hard to take something away. And historically, they've had even wilder picks. We're talking about Shaco from Kanavi that's come out. One of our only few Shakos in the league. Ashun has picked Kindred, Nidalee. Like, Kanavi can play those champions too. It's just crazy going down the pack. So it feels like, for now, the smiles on Shun's face. Uh, we're just getting rid of the basic ones. Vi taken away. Does BLG go, okay, no monkey for you. Let's make it a little bit harder to get some of your engagement, some of your setup with this great mid laner once again. Yeah, Wukong, Lee Sin. Lee Sin being the other thing that comes to mind, especially if JDG did just want to lean heavily into trying to play out aggressive early game setups and then having mm -hmm. things like the Dragon's Rage to potentially kick the Kennen away from any skirmish that does come on through. So now balls in JDG's court. They can either look to take away whatever jungle they think is highest priority if they do think it's something like that, Lee Sin. Or, you know, enemies already showing the Kennen. So it would also be very easy to just look to answer the top lane pick now. Oh, we're going to do this again, though, aren't we? I guess Kanavi wants to play it around. Not going to be the Viego, but Lee Sin taken away from Shun. As you said, the priority pick left. And jungle picked up with topside as the counter for JDG. Now, let's see what builds you do here, Lyric, because running into Lee Sin, does Shun want to go something a little bit more risque? You know, with him, you always have to wonder if something like the Kindred is going to come out right because it is Shun. I oh, think if they wanted to go more good. standard, they yes. would bring out the Viego, but they do it. The Kindred comes out three and zero on it this split. It's been banned every game against BLG so far in playoffs. And now Shun's going to have his chance to show us why. Finally, again, this guy is, an, is a machine on Kindred and it's constantly banned against him. Lyric, fun fact, in the regular season, 81% of games, and ladies and gentlemen, they play 16 series. That Kindred's banned away. 81% of the time is, hey, it's not the only big pick coming through. We got a feral monster for 369 versus Bin's Cannon. Top lane just got hell interesting as well. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be great to see Cho'Gath coming out from 369. I believe it's his first Cho'Gath of the split. Of course, we've had it come out a couple times, usually up into the Scion but going to get to see what it can do here. Of course, having the sustain to be able to get through lane is going to be quite nice and, and just giving them the front line that they needed. So now, I love it. Two very different compositions, right? BLG, yep. it, it, it's about the protection that you bring, having something like the Kindred, but having the backline access come out in a Galio. But it begins now, and it's going to start with a bot lane all in to see if BLG can win a game back after JDG snatched it from their hands in game one. I also love how 
the, the roles reverse, even in terms of level one, right? It was JDG going for this exact play in game one. Five members down towards bot lane. It didn't work out for them. It looks like it's going to be the same story for BLG in game two. Gotta love geometry. Have you ever seen those videos, Lyric, of like the professor drawing the perfect circle? You know, if you stand horizontal to a whiteboard or at least, um, I guess, parallel to it, you put your hand out at the bottom and in a big, in a big circle shape, it's a test to see if you can draw a perfect circle. Now, BLG are going to show us exactly how to do that. This missing runs in. The whole crew are here, though, with Night Stun, of course, up. Depends on what he started as BLG 3v3. This is not stopping. Um, okay. JDG are just playing with the idea, but they are eventually going to back away. It's nothing going to pan out from this level one. And again, looking at the side of BLG, I, I want to keep our eyes on, on how Shun does, how many marks he's able to get, and, and if they're yep. really able to get this Kindred going. Wanting a few levels under his belt. You don't really have a ton of great setup in terms of ganks, especially coming from bot side. Yagao will be able to do uh, a lot. You know, the knock up into the taunt, Finn bringing some CC. So those are some potential avenues for you to look. So for JDG, it really does feel like it's dealer's choice. Kanavi can go anywhere. He really can. And again, Kanavi on this lease in historically has been one of his best champs as well. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've watched the LPL for a couple of years, you know that Kanavi's lease in is goated. But again, Shun's Undefeated kindred, the split. you know, is the same as well. And you're right, undefeated too. So one of these junglers is taking a loss from this split. 3-0 and zero versus 6-0 and zero in the jungle. And Lyric, I brought up some stats here. I looked at Kindred on Shun. 18, or rather the other way around, 18 and 8. Historically, 70% win rate up to 26 games in his career. Shun is a machine as now. Looking for Knight. I don't know if he's marked, but even at level 3, he steps forward. Shun wants to come in. Shield of Duran gets the stun up. The Justice Punch already used to get the gap close. 1, 2, 3, and not going to find the mark, or rather the kill down. Shun comes through, but still gets it a summoner from Knight. We hit on it just a few minutes ago, right? Mid, really going to be the best place for Shun to look for ganks. Really the only, I'd say, consistent setup you have if you want to be able to look for kills. Able to get the summoner, so now going to be a potential review play, but look at the minimap. Oh. Actually, Kanavi's the one waiting in the wings to try and get something off the Yao. Yeah, it's just as fun. Sonic Wave still going to connect. Taken, Shield of Duran under turret means Kanavi takes a turret shot, but your gal's forced out. Teleports, Eris! Oh my god! You know, the thing is, 369 picked this into the cannon lyric, but Bin on cannon is a monster of its own world. Which is great coming out from Bin, utilizing the range advantage that he has. And, you know, I'm not super familiar with this matchup, but still, I, I think one of the selling points of Cho'Gath into cannon is just the fact that you are able to survive. You do have the sustain coming out from your passive. You yep. have abilities to try to contend with his poke, with things like your Q, even going the Comet to be able to go that route, so... Level 6, I think, is where it can become a little bit dicier, depending on how it's played out, right? Having that ulti available, but Shun going to okay. keep punishing Kanavi here in spot down, Dance of Arrows, Mounting Dread is there, he flashes over! Kanavi ticking down with Red Buff, but Yagao coming in for the flank, wins the war with the Flash Justice Punch, Shield of Duran! And Shun gets first blood, and it was a mark lyric. Kanavi's mark to death. BLG setting up for Shun to have an impact on this game and show why every team has banned out this Kindred in playoffs so far. And again, just the most banned champion against BLG all split long. He's going to make his way up towards top scuttle to get another mark, mark online yeah. and really start accelerating on this Kindred. Again, you flip 50-50, oh. but it looks like he's like, hang on, that's what they'd expect me to do. Shun now going to go for 369, but backs off and again goes back towards that mark. Two marks in under five minutes, Lurik. Any Kindred would agree that is just the perfect start to this game. And again, Shun with his track record on this champion. Things already looking good. And a bit more attack speed here in the early jungle clear. So, 1k gold lead, 5 minutes in. And Kanavi on the back foot, Lyric, you were talking about how he can play this game. But we are getting close to that level 6 point already. And things do get a little bit more difficult when Yigao has his ulti too. Going to be able to follow up on any targets or any fights that come out. Especially when JDG are, are such a individualistic or isolated teams in terms of how they don't really link up much from lane to lane. It could always just set up or someone's over aggressing out of nowhere. It's not a 1v1, it's a 1v2. Or it's not like it would be a 2v2 here, a 3v3, a 3v2 because Yigao can join up. So I think this pick can do a lot 
to counteract the type of aggression that JDG usually like to bring out. And it'll be interesting to see what Kanavi does about it, right? We talked in game one extensively about Knight and Kanavi needing to link up. Uh, oh, should we be looking at that angle again? Should we be looking at all Hale's bot? Like, how did JDG kind of facilitate this early game and push themselves into a position of power? Like I said earlier, I think Kanavi actually has a plethora of options. Really, you have set up and you have damage in every lane. Is Ruler now going to be forced to use that cleanse? But most of your, your uh, eggs want to be in the spot lane basket. You want to yep. be getting Ruler ahead. Is really the only one who's going to be able to put out consistent damage as the game goes on. It's going to be really hard now. Because look, Yigao, with constant pressure, can just look to move over. And I don't know how you're ever going to get a chance to really overload the spot lane unless BLG show on top side. Well, again, for now, it looks like for Yigao, he's zoning off Knight. You can see the ward placed in. Just killed away. Shun is going to be taking this dragon, though. This is not a mark. But Shun still getting the first dragon of the game. And again, bot going well for this team as BLG. Hen CS lead, or at least close to. I'm not sure the wave's being pushed up bot, but it might be even more. Because again, look at where Shun's going. Threatening, raw, or missing, so they can't push out the lane. I mean, Lyric, it's just, it's early game of Shun again that was great in game one on the Sejuani pick. That again, it seems like he's everywhere on the map to start this game off. And it just goes to show of we were hitting on the difference between the junglers in the last game. That it felt like Shun has been working more with his laners. Is Knight now going to be pinched? Oh, Bin is going to get the stun up. Flashes over the wall. The slicing Maelstrom gets a double stun on the Nightwind's war. Two connect for the damage. And Bin's roam down makes an angry bear out of Knight. Great job. Has Pryo on the top side. Knows he can move down. Now we're going to see if we get anything more than just slight trades in bomb. But doesn't look like it. So winning out in bot lane in terms of the CS, already winning out in top side. We've got some kills on both Bin and Shun. And it feels like we're set up really nicely for Herald to spawn in 20 seconds. Yep. Another kill means a 1k gold lead means also Noon Quiver picked up by Shun. With that kill going down as well, Bin was able to get himself closer to what looks like a proto belt being picked up here. So BLG lyrics, as you said, the Herald is coming up soon. Shun's on the right side of the map. You know... I'm wondering if the same thing's going to happen in this playoffs that happened last year. Oh, yeah. Because, uh... Oh, wait. We're going to get a re replay of his that roam all the way down? Woo. Okay, we are. We are going to actually just watch him make his way all the way down. So we're going to see here how the setup comes on through. Knight is trying to get the wave pushed in, but both sides being pushed off. Gets the stun, able to follow through. A little tag of the Q from Yigao to make Somehow. sure he gets an assist as well. But I want to go back, assuming... Are JDG going to contest? They're going to contest. Sterix, your I time Your time to pop off. We've got Feast here for 369. It only depends if it turns into a fight. Jun is backing away. I is exposed as well. And there's no hard reset here. So it looks like for 369. Oh, give it. Give it to him. Oh, did he eat it? He did. Oh, yummy. As Ruler, meanwhile. Oh, he's double tagged. Crescendum doesn't kill him, though. And Elkin on. Feeling good in this 2v2 lane while JDG put their resources topside. But still, BLG now, knowing those resources were topside, looking to angle around bot. Doesn't look like anything will come from it, as Ruler and Missing do get those resets off. So now, for BLG, we still know what we're looking for, right? It's going to be around Shun, it's going to be around Yigao. For JDG, though, the question is where they're going to be looking to drop this Herald. They haven't taken plates anywhere yet on the map, so usually you can kind of narrow it down like that if you can just outright break open the turret and maybe generate map pressure that way. But uh, again, I, I would want to see the gold given over to Ruler and make sure he's able to have an impact on this game. Yeah, as you said, a bot needs to come through. I like to use the words consistent damage, because again, you look at Annie, Lee Sin, I mean, Chogath, like, consistent damage on this team is only on one carry. So for Ruler, you know, big shoes again here in this game, and he's not on the Zeri. He's on something that eventually, Lyric, we look at a Felios versus a Lucian. We know there's going to be outscaling. We know in that 2v2, one's going to be more relevant than another as this game goes on, especially with the team fighting you laid out by BLG. The fact that this early game is going this smoothly is a good sign. And it is, is exposed in the mid lane, but there are pings going down towards bot side. And again, this early game continues to be BLG focused down on this lane that JDG needs. Oh, oh force of okay. the flash because the knockup did not connect. That could have been the difference maker there for 369, but without it, Knows he has to play it safe. But I want to see what's going on down in the bot lane. We still have a lot of posturing. Both junglers are sticking around. 
Elf without the ulti though. Kanavi sitting with the Herald, as you said, so he's waiting. Shun, if he backs here, an opportunity, but he holds it. Okay, Kanavi gets the kick onto Arnie. Flaxus gets the wild growth. He's alive. Tidal wave dodged as well. What a great polymorph for Shun. Kills him with the lamb. Press by Kanavi's going to sit in it for now. But that's a three man as Kanavi comes out about to die. Oh, Shun's ulti was prime. As JDG draw in night for the TP, but your gals moved in as well. I've been getting so much. They got a kill. They got summoners out of it. Heal down from missing. Flash out from Kanavi. TP down from Knight. Where you go? Not having to utilize that one. Not having to use Zulti. Just walk straight down from River. And BLG are doing such a good job of containing JDG and not allowing them to make the plays they want. I mean, hell, if we can read it, they're going to look for that play on bot lane. BLG sure as hell can read it too. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, again, jungle lead here this time. Almost 20 CS is up. Balls on that because Lyric. Navi went in for the kick. He didn't have it for Shun later on. I mean, luckily for on, able to flash away. Wild Growth comes out, so a lot burned. He's trying to take down the Lulu. And then Shun going forward has a great ult for himself. And then we're going to see here, then kiting back, able to Whoa. take down Kanavi is Knight. Oh my god. He's gone. And that and it was another mark. Lyric, Shun is on five marks at 12 minutes in the game. Dude, if Forest Within was watching this, he'd be happy a man right now because this Kindred is quickly taking over the game now with his second kill. Opening up mid for Yagao. Dragons up Lyric. BLG, I don't know what they've been doing at the start of playoffs, but it's just been getting better and better. Great to see them coming in. Let's remember that this team did have a coaching change coming into playoffs, right? They were the team that ended up picking up Tabe. Oh, yeah. And we know what Tabe was able to do with RNG, RNG. for all those years. <laughs> yeah, he beat RNG. RNG. Took him down as, oh, no. Kick, last cone, double shield as ran. Grabbing him there as well. The wind will do so much damage. Dragon taken in the meantime, but Yagao trying to get follow further up on the missing. JDG will survive, but they got blast coned on. And now with double dragon, BOG. Just looking for a little bit more in the enemy jungle. Yeah, we see Rift Herald going down in bots. Gonna pull him there. Nice. Oh, there it is, though. An opportunity here is JDG. Draw in your gal. There's an ulti coming through. Only it's the, the scuttle in the end. As Elf gets the kill. I can't believe On didn't die. I am surprised. It's just so much burst coming through, but not enough to take him down. And honestly. Looking at this game, we can be like, hey, very similar situation to game one, huge lead coming out from BLG, but I think it'd be much harder to lose out. We're going to get a replay of what happened in mid, but again, looking at how this game's going to play out holistically, I feel like it's much harder for, for J to G to do what they did last game and find their way back in, because sure, you're going to go for these plays that Knight has on Annie like so, but you have tools like the Wild Growth is, ooh, the kick coming out from Kanavi. Making it so that Shun is able to get away and on, like you said, lucky not to go down. But again, Wild Growth, uh, the Kindred old able to come out. There's so many things that if Knight finds these great stuns like he did in game one, you're going to be able to survive past them, have more damage coming through on the opposite side of the fight because you not only have an Aphelios, but also have a Kindred scaling up. And it really feels like JDG are, are going to need some massive oversteps from BLG, especially now that Elk has picked up his Gale Force. Oh yeah, Gale Force cracking there for Shun in the jungle. He's onward to the Black Cleaver, it seems here. And Rocket now Elf. Upside 369 again. He's going to get bullied out. Shun just destroys him, man. That mounting dread is huge with Kraken. There's also a question of how 369 ever intended of getting in range of yeah. Elk, like uh, of a composition that does again playing double marksman, you know? Yeah. It's going to be rough. Lyric. I like that you brought up the point of Knight. It feels like BLG have run into the second game with an answer, right? Not only the Galio in lane, but as you said, a lot of tools to stop Knight in his place from the successful game when he had. Finn's going to DC. Oh. Okay, so we do see that one live. There's a bit of a pause. So we're now going to sit back and wonder what happened. Your gal just, he's sipping, man. He's like, all right, no, we'll wait and see. But hey, BLG with a 4K gold lead. This game two is looking promising. I will say again. Looking good. BLG wanting to keep their hopes alive of, again, their first ever international appearance. If they can win this, if they can win out in their next match, make it into that final. Or hell, again, even even just seeing incremental growth, seeing them make a, a third place finish even, you know, that would still be quite monumental. Taking down JDG would be huge. And for JDG, we're talking about the game and how they come back. and. Again, like, what tools do you have? It, you go in with the tippers, 
Kindred Alt comes out, Lambs Spite's there, Wild Growth comes through, like Galio can follow up, Cho'Gath. You're just going to run down a, a Kindred yeah. who's going to be able to cut you and a Felios who's going to outrange you. You just don't really have the same tools there. It's going to re require, like, heroics from Kanavi, getting behind someone, kicking the Aphelios into your team. He gets taken down. Maybe kiting out from a Kindred Ultimate, re-engaging. Yeah. Like, <laughs> even explaining it feels silly. Again, there's so many things that, that have to happen for JDG to get a, a solid fight off. And with such a big lead with Shun on his champion, that's not only 3-0, and zero, but... That 70% win rate over 26 games of his career. There is a reason that during the regular season, 80% of games, that's not series, but individual games, teams ban this against BLG. Shun, once he gets rolling with it, can really take over. And Lyric, it's a good sign for BLG because this organization, this team, the, the bunch of scraps put together, Elk on coming through, and we have Yagal kicked out of JDG for night. We have Shun, who was IG's carry, but, you know, joining BLG alongside Bin, who was the mainstay. It's just all fitting together. They were off-season champions, too, with the Marcia Cup. It's amazing how it's come to this point, and whether this is a game win or not, the fact that it's looking pretty good, the fact that even game one, they held a pretty manageable gold lead. It's showing how BLG deserves to be here on the top four. Now, Lyric, we are back after the pause. Looks like Bin's issues were resolved, but... That 4k gold lead still here at the 15 minute mark as turret plating falls down. And as BLG start playing the side lane with Yigao and Bin. Yeah, they're going to pick up Herald now. Should be another way to just accelerate and get their gold lead even further up. Which, now sitting at 5k, they're, they're where they were last time at an even earlier break point. So yep. they get the second Herald, they could eventually break down that bot tier one, or, you know, if they get a chance to make a good push in mid, maybe potentially use that to draw away from a dragon, get themselves on soul point. Like, BLG are just flooded with options right now. You don't expect to see them too heavily, I feel like, commit to uh, an outright 1-3-1. One, one. Gallo definitely going to be wanting to link up with the team and utilize the soul, but for now going to be stuck catching waves against the Annie. Maybe Shun could look to make his way down, unless 369 over-aggresses in that top side. Depends. 369 has been caught out before in this series. He's not having the greatest of laning phases, let's be real. BLG have bullied him quite a bit. Uh, but Bin also, through that early lane, we saw 369 forced out. We saw where that gold lead and that CS lead came from. Bin is once again up almost 2,000 gold over 369. And Lyric, you already mentioned how BLG want to operate. This team fighting cannon is going to be huge with some of these ultimates coming through with almost two items this early on. It's also just going to be like the cannon, you know, you're now going to have more agency to get into fights, find flanks, because you're going to have vision control. But the rest of your team, it's like, how are JDG going to walk in? Look at the map right now, just littered with BLG wards throughout River. They're going to be able to retake the vision towards spot side of the top that JDG have been able to get is... You know, I told you, I'll tell the world, my goal today was not to call JDG top esports. We've already failed. <laughs> not even That's not even in the game three yet. We've already failed. Over it again. Uh, we'll just call Civil Light. Dude, you have 9369. It, it, it's 9369. It's 9369. What, what do you expect? I've done it before. I did it. I did this split a couple of times. I mean, again, when 9369 joined back up, you just thought, hang on a minute. This seems a little bit familiar. And speak of the devil. Okay, here comes the chunky man from the top side. He's going to walk his way in as BLG. Shun's just engaged on stunned up. He can't land for a spike. JDG Lyric, the window was so small, but they found it through night again. But you see, you see the types of windows, the types of plays they have to look for to find ways into this game. Playing in Fog of War, waiting for someone from BLG to walk into them. And now going to hopefully take a dragon off of this. BLG, though, still want to contest. They're bringing in the Ken. Actually, it's the Galio coming in. It is. Kennen does have Flash and the Engage. Yagao wants to set him up. Bin thinking about it, but Dragon's already down. Objective Bounty goes through as well. And JDG, it's just like Game 1 Lyric. If there's a will, there's a way. JDG just... It's these, these small, cheeky plays allowing them to get back in. Looks like the LG Optus should be able to get a bottling turret. JDG on, on the opposing side don't feel comfortable in overstaying to push mid, knowing that Shun is back up. Just back off, try and get closer towards your next items, and come back out onto the map. So, again, JDG might get dragged at BLG at least trading with gold by taking this turret. Okay, 369. How much jeopardy is he in? Ult does come through as well. Ambitious out of Elk, but 
Maybe just forcing 369 back as the rest of the team are moving up here. Shouldn't now joins it as well, Lyric. He's got that Herald in a turret on the menu while Finn's actually taking one of his own. Gonna keep going with the Siege. Herald's gonna be dropped down and with Knight up towards the top side, there's no way for J to G to even answer, oh. but bring in the flame. Why don't you find Bin? Knight doesn't have flash available, we'll use it before, but Yigal's obviously gonna come through. Hero's entrance, Bin pops the slice from Maelstrom, and Knight's just hit the counter punch. An ambulance for who you are. As Shun now joins in, in a turret through mid, was already getting pressured, but now BLG looking for more on the menu. This is why we well, highlighted the same types of plays won't be able to work. There's just too many defensive tools on the side of BLG to make sure that those picks can't be given in the same way. JG's one reprieve, their one kill, was BLG blindly walking into them. So, BLG, oh, Elk. Uh, Elk, okay, almost did land for a spike. What? Elk on 20 HP, Sean has the fingers of a masseuse. Comes out with the save. Elk manages to get out alive. And that's gonna be it. BLG gonna be able to disengage, gonna be able to back off. JDG gonna try and find small wins off of this. We can see Kanabi taking away the blue buff right now. And with, with Baron coming up, it's gonna be a battle for Vision towards this top half of the map. <laughs> Actually, I'm wrong. It's gonna be a battle for the Baron outright, knowing the Elk went for the reset. On spawn, on spawn, on spawn. Elk needs to come through fast. JDG are pulling off though. It looks like not too confident with this one. <laughs> Being 6,000 gold I just behind. wanted to say, like, are you really gonna all get into that pit up against the cannon, uh, a Kindred, a Gat, just so many ways of shutting you out, locking you up, and getting damage. So we're gonna see here, Elf walking in, not expecting the damage to oh. come through from Ruler, but those oh, fast fingers from Shun, 20 HP on the Aphelios, and Elk manages to survive. 60 minutes, $80, it's worth it. They're precise. Your back has never been cracked like that before, Shun. Now with a black cleaver, by the way, it feels like his prices should go up. And especially when you're a two-item kindred lyric, this is just his game to continue taking over. You, you said it so well. It's a double marksman comp as well. And should now with six marks in total, his range is going to be out of elks, maybe even more at this point in the game as BLG look to hover around and utilize the strength and damage they currently have. BLG just feel confident, just walking up as a group in mid lane, even look at the minimap. You have been constantly hovering, just in case he can find an angle to come off on a flank and lock people down. And they're gonna use this push into top side like we can see now, and just try and get more control over vision. Uh, make sure that JDG don't have any information to work with, pull them across the map by pushing inside, and just doing a great job of, of playing things by the book. And that's what we've known them through from playoffs. They're grouping, they're team fighting, how they sync up. I think your gal's been really good at that so far uh, in playoffs as well. And you know, I've been talking about Finn being the best top laner in playoffs, or at least one of. I, I think I would say best best top laner, especially through his late phase I mean, so far. 369 was first stall pro, and we see what's happening in this series. Sure, yep. he is opting into like tank matchups against carries, but still, Finn having uh, a field day. Okay, wrong button, wrong, yeah, the cat sideways. I mean, wrong button from Shun. He knows, he's laughing. That was not the right one. Bloodthirster, now picked up by Alec. When we are saying that JDG are so indexed into just outright bursting an opponent out, uh, having that shield online is gonna do so much more to just make it so JDG, if once again, an another target that's gonna be hard to whittle down. Yeah, I'm trying to set it up, as you said whittling down a target before. It was based on Shun, based on when he didn't have his ulti. Now that is a reality once again, as Shun has a little bit to wait for that cooldown. But how did JDG just walk in? Been now spotted on the ward on the side as well, Lyric. And that dragon, five seconds till it's up. JDG aren't even all here. They're gonna have to teleport in if they want a piece of this. And well, they do. But Knight, it's on a control ward. So BLG have a bit of an idea here. They're gonna chase him down. They know. They see when you teleport on control wards. They go for the rest of the fighters. Knight now spot out to Shun. Remember, he has no ulti. Tidal wave knocks him up. It might burn him. A double kill coming through. Ruler's now in the game as Lyric. That fake use of the ult from Shun. The misclick. Cost them everything. It, it punished them. That is absolutely wild. The misclick from Shun. Being that it costs BLG. And if they end up losing this game because they are going to lose the Baron right now, my god, my heart would be bleeding 
for BLG. They, yeah. at the very least, will get themselves on Soul Point. But it's the same again. They moved to Soul Point in game one. JG found a fight based around that fourth dragon. And even though BLG moved to Soul Point, it kept happening thanks to Knight. So, are we doing deja vu? We hitting the gas here? What is going on? Knowing, having TP both members in, we're going to see it's actually Knight the one to come in on the flank, which I think makes sense because he's the one with the easy ability to lock uh, people down on the end. So goes for it. Once again, Knight being the hero to bring them in. The stun comes through. 369 flashes in. And one thing that JG have just shown they're very good at is even when they're behind, they know how to identify who the key target is. They know how to prioritize getting the kills off and like going in in unison, going in in sync. It's been such a pleasure to watch and take advantage of these small mistakes BLG Whoa. is giving over. Ooh. I mean, speaking of mistakes, Ruler went forward on that, had to flash away, ambitious, but the whole of BLG just ratted him. Now we're going to see Lambs just might back up, so BLG having that extra safety online to be able to play around with, and then taking advantage of Knight and Ruler both not having flash if a fight breaks out. Elk almost caught out as well. You mentioned Knight, Ruler, also 369 if he wants to flash Q. That's something worth noting. Your gal's same with Shield of Durant. I remember the days you could flash Shield of Durant. Remember when Galio could W and then flash? Those were the days. Those were the good old days, especially when Galio, um, what, his ulti, I think you attacked him and he just spurted it back out at you in season three or four. Those were the good old days. I got to pause. Culling comes out. Elk takes no damage. And 369 gets bullied out by Shun. Remember, two item Kindred. And even though JDG got the pick before Lyric, as you said earlier, it's just a very different composition that JDG have to run into this time. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was trying to remember what Old Galia was like. Old Galia was the one that had, like, the Nunu-like channel with his ult, but it was, like, a, a yep. giant taunt and then damage, right? That's what it was? It was. Man, it's yeah, been so yeah, long. Yeah. I, I can around. remember some things very easy, like, again, like, Old Scion and, and how that interacted. Oh, but Old yeah, Galia, oh my god. Drop. I just remember it, it being a mess. Though it did it, look way more intimidating, which I liked. The best... The, the, uh, so, best rework, probably Gangplank, because old Gangplank was hilariously rubbish. It was so OP. I'm talking season oh, one. Oh, I love Aatrox. Oh, I think the Aatrox yeah. rework has, has always been my favorite just because of the amount of... That's good. I, like, it's just so fun, the, the dashing around with your Qs, hitting the sweet spots. Maybe Galio uh, is the not best fun. one. Yeah. I mean, Galio's is pretty solid. You know, I, I need to... I need a old Galio. Oh. We, we need to go back. Is on... Old, you gotta be old careful. Galio not as great as Knight's trying to get a pick. The back's already taken, though. That timing. A little bit rough for Knight, but the intention was there. As I believe it was Bin who is backing in the brush. Now, Lyric, we've got a time up. Two minutes, 15, until Infernal Soul. BLG have lost a bit of their gold lead. They still remain in control, but JDG are, are turtling this out of it. Just pulling back, waiting for picks. Navi spotted out. I mean, look at Ruler. BLG, they're just kind of expecting it. Infinity Edge, now online. Like you said, turtling it out, getting the gold that they've needed. Uh, 369 also finishing off the Jack Show as he did start off with the Abyssal Mask. So we're gonna see what Ruler can do. He's playing very far forward. But he can't do that much damage. Lyric, he's a three and a half item Lucian who's culling won't hurt your gal with his onions and also 10 stacks of Rod of Ages. He's looking for Elk, but Elk has a Lulu and Kindred's never in rage. So now it's culling down. Let's see what else JDG can do. Knight is waiting for that influential ult again. Jun running forward into Ruler. Better AD wins, apparently. Has been now channeling forward. He gets Tibbers out because he was running at night head first. Almost dies because of it. But that is Tibbers down and out as positioning here for Elk. A little bit dangerous. Three members for JDG. Try him. But he will not be caught out. So ideally as BLG, you would want to be able to find a fight before that Tibbers comes back up. The good thing about Bin getting chunked out in any circumstances, he has TP online. But... JDG back off, so you're not going to be able to force the fight off of that cooldown being used. And there's no neutral up. Dragon, still about a minute away. So it definitely doesn't feel like it was all too bad for Knight to, again, just gamble throughout the Tibbers and, and, and see what you're able to come away with. Observers highlighting the TP ward there on our screens as well. So maybe an opportunity, Lyric, for Knight to get a really good flank. And I will say, so far in the series, JG have been really good at setting up some of those wards for team fights, right? Despite their comp 
whether it's game one or game two. Uh, some of the teleport positions have been pretty pretty threatening for BLG so far. I feel like we've just seen BLG struggle at when it comes to like retaking vision. You can even see now oh, yeah. uh, not clearing some of the wards towards that bottom side jungle. Now going for their resets, they do have sweepers back online, a lot of control wards and inventory. Because you can see that's the play that JDG are banking on, right? It's walking into night from Fog of War. The Tippers comes out, multiple members, immediate burst out. Don't give time for things like the Lambs of Spite to be able to come through and save the day. So Vision is going to be the most pivotal thing for BLG to get to not let that play happen. For JDG too, I mean, Bin is spotted out by 369. Meanwhile, Bo Knight's caught out. Dragon goes down, but BLG have a bit of a pinch here. Been thinking about it. He's got a blast cone to take. There's a good aqua prison from JDG, but Lyric, they're on the wrong side of the map. They've got to run away. Ruler tried backing away, but BLG this pinch massive. Bin has flash. He's got slicing Maelstrom waiting for his time to go in. 369 zones him away. And maybe it gives help to the other members of JDG, but as he flashes, as Cullen comes through, Jing Dong, this is not where you want to be. Kanami goes in for the kick. Ain't in as Elf goes in and takes down a world champion. He was known as Joe Among, but now we ride him like a stallion as Elf. Elf going massive, going forward in the team fight, believing in his team, knowing Jeez. things like the wild growth are going to come through and make sure he can play as aggressively as he wants. And now that's going to open up the Baron for BLG. The man who's developed over five great years of gameplay, who just went in full legendary mode. <sighs> That's Elk Lyric, the reliable carry is there, and JDG, as you said, now have to defer off of this Baron. Like, it's gonna go down pretty quick. Knight needs a miracle. Yeah, still gonna wait around and look for Pia Gao. Oh, no. Gonna flash got over. They're from the same look city. At his and you know, let's but... take him down. Bin, gonna be the one to come through and get it done. The rivalry massive. Yeah, Gao showboating here. And ladies and gentlemen, with Baron going down, BLG. Reacetane, their control. 5,000 back up in the lead. This game is looking good to take us to a one all So BLG, again, wanting to try to take back Vision. They can't just finally walk in. Luckily, they do spot Knight on a ward, so they don't have to worry about the Annie. And it's what leads the Gauda TPing in into making sure that they're able to bring him down. So I like that BLG realized, hey, let's use this opportunity to keep forcing a fight so we can take that Baron that's going to be up incredibly soon. It's just about how do they want to start it. And funnily enough, it's Elk, the one with the agency to go in. We see him Gale oh. Force and then flash away from Kanabi and then just run Ruler down, knowing the Wild Girls there, knowing the old from Yagao is going to be able to follow up and just runs away with the team fight for Billy Billy. That's just legendary. Bold Steel and Elk relying on his team. Again, BLG have synced so well together, not only in the split, but in playoffs so far. You can see this synergy. And against JDG, our number one team. Game one, they look poised to take it. They were up 5,000, but this time around, as Lyric said, different conditions with the more team fighting prospects here for BLG in game number two. And Lyric, they've got that soul coming up yet again. They're 5,000 gold ahead. They've got the Baron. They're sieging through mid. And for JDG on the defensive here, as they just watch minions start taking away and chipping at their inner turret. And I'm going to have to worry about two lanes. We can see the cannon right now pushing in bot. So BLG, again, if they were able to start taking away some of this vision, they do have some control wards in pocket. Would be nice. Like Then they could use that flag of war, rotate back and forth, and JDG really not have any idea of what is going on. Still going to be able to do that with the Baron, even if JDG do have some information. What does the information matter if you can't do anything about it? That's right, again. Doesn't matter because the base BLG and find an angle just seems so difficult. We've got three items in the top lane, three items through mid with a potential Magi that could come through from Yigal, who's doing pretty well in this Galio. Three item of Felios, folks, you know exactly what that means. And with the QSS as well, it just gets so much harder. You can see in the meanwhile, though, Yigal hitting down the side lane. Lyric, Bin's going top. BLG putting a, a, a bit of a stamp through mid as well. All lanes adding pressure. Again, just playing by the book, that they get bot lane in her turret. Now, move your cannon up towards top side, rotate between mid and top, and take this one. Also means, because JDG were fighting down towards bot side, that's where all their vision was concentrated. So now you're going to have first move. And now, once again, going to be on JDG to try and find an overstamp. But when you have this little amount of the map to work with, you can't even set up the same cheeky plays with the Annie that you were trying to do before. Sure. 
Only one of them's worked so far. I mean, Knight is 0, 5, and 3 in Lyric, to be fair. I feel like BLG had a really good response in draft. They were willing to leave this Annie open again. But they learned from their mistakes in game one. They adjusted their draft. And it feels like there's a lot of options you were talking about that could deal with this Annie ulti. That can deal with how JDG wanted to play out this game. The damage source as well. Let's be real. Not enough at this point. It's four item Lucian, yes. But will Ruler be alive to output all of his DPS? Especially when Elk is close to matching. Has so much shielding. And Knight. Oh my oh god. No. Slicing Maelstrom used on a single target. But it doesn't matter. Your gal teleports in. They're just like, whatever. We won't need it for the fight anyway. Right now, I mean, we just see BLG running JDG down. Great job yeah. of making this series competitive. Great job by Elk for this game to show up against his former support that he played so many years with and showing, hey, you think you're happy with our divorce? I'm also happy working with On down in the spot lane. <laughs> and then Shun, I mean, right, JDG Gamble on giving away this Kindred. I actually don't think the plan is bad. It's a best of five. It's been banned every game so far against BLG, and they've still won anyway. Leave it yep. open, see, what's hap see what happens. But you've learned you are not going to do that again. No way. Again, Shun's control the early game. Sublime as BLG's control this late game even more massive. The Mountain Dread broke out as Konami has to back away. He's been targeted. And BLG opened the base. Inhibitor turret in the bottom side down, and Inhibitor follows through. The Ruler... Was that just Bin's damage? I mean, this cannon is a bit of an electric eel right now. And it just goes to show the draft in, in the next game. You know, assuming no huge mistakes come out from BLG and they're able to close this out, it's going to be all the more interesting. Going back to worrying about things like the cannon, going back to now as JDG having to put respect on that Kindred, just a lot of things. They're going to have to go through your mind going into game three of BLG with, I'm not even going to say if, BLG have Soul, BLG have the Aphelios, yep. the Kindred, BLG are going to be able to close this out. And, and, and if I curse it, I welcome it, because I want to <laughs> see how JDG would win this game. I mean, it would be crazy. And again, like BLG with a very different style of this game, you'd have to think as, uh, oh, the mark is left. What a pro from your gal. Eighth mark, by the way, if you want to keep track. As, uh, we look at Knight again, who just tried to back, and then Bin decided to press three buttons. <laughs> yeah, comes in, oh, throws out the Q, ulties there, like everything. He's just dishing out the damage, like you said, with Shun. You said sitting on eight marks, so gonna be at the uh, 100 bonus range. So gonna be at a pretty mm -hmm. nice point. Wait for a few more to come online and see if he makes his way up to 125. Look, he's got GA too. So not only does it become harder to kill, he's got a backup plan. So for Shun, I mean, it just what more could you want? Especially when you're seeing Kanavi versus, for a lot of global fans, maybe an unnamed jungler. People don't remember, but this is the guy that covered for IG, uh, you know, for when the whole team kind of fell apart there. Remember, they, they lost their prime and they... Uh, was he with the rookie in the shy squad? I believe he was for a couple of splits. He was. But he was the first. And then, then you know, they left. And they left. he was the one that got built around. Had yep. the uh, roster with, like, Mole... Uh, on yeah. still in the bot lane. Yeah, didn't work out, but we did see on that roster, a lot of times, shouldn't going to carry performance wasn't enough for the team to win. Oh this time on BLG having the players around him to enable that. Everything's up on the side of BLG as well. All summoners are there. Oh God, Shun's just chasing them down. Look at this for the Infernal Soul, this Indrid. Gonna be popped here with the Force Spaceship, but you're like, what even? Excuse me, Stone Plate is uh, Shun just hovers around, threatens here, this Kindred has no fear, as with the Lulu behind him as well, Ben Dolphy flashes in, doesn't get too much off, but again, someone deal with Shun! He's flashing forward, sets up the Egal, there's a land for a spite, but he's still auto-attacking that mounting dread. It's a 1-2-3 Mike Tyson knockout. And now for BLG, they can just keep pushing down this space. They're going to break open inhibitor. They have supers down in bot. They're going to be able to push through top. Oh my God. And Elk might just start killing everyone. That Cho'Gath's got three items to be a tanky man. Elk! Oh, oh the flash forward, man. Remember my name. BLG now. I mean, they have everything here. Supers are in the base. Everyone's alive. And they can just keep looking to end the game. They're going to do it here. I mean, JDG need to stand up. They need to fight with what's left, but they're just getting poked down to death. Bin comes through your gal, flashing on top. Elk again into Ruler. The world champion means nothing, and BLG first to them.
means absolutely deadly, evening up the series. Great to see, especially from Yagao, his first his first playoffs on a team that isn't JDG. Spent, I believe, five years on JD yep. Gaming. Coming up against him again in this playoffs and now picking up a win set up by Shun. How well he works with his jungle elk being that huge carry threat for the team. And it just goes to show that, I mean, this is going to be a competitive one. Two out of two games. BLG yeah. has had the lead early. This very much could be, this could have been a 2-0. 2-0 start for BLG. Had, you know, something's not gone sideways in that game one. But great bounce back to make this a competitive series. I mean, again, BLG, like, it was the same early game lyric, but it was... How it transitioned through. JDG found a couple of picks, a couple of fights, but from that point, BLG kind of found their composure. And I think it's important to note that it was a very different style of composition, as you were telling us throughout. But I, I feel like it's just BLG learning from their mistakes too, kind of dotting the I's, crossing the T's better with how they wanted to take their fights. Yeah, I feel like a, a couple of things changed for them. One, their com like their composition answered much better in into what T uh JDG God, I did it again. But yeah, JDG right. put together this time, right? Uh we said like how how's this Annie and Lee Sin setup really gonna come through? Like the burst it just doesn't feel like enough up against like Galliolt coming through, the Lamb's despite being there, just just so many things you know have to contend with. Cho'Gath, which I was excited for. I thought, cool, we get to see how 369 is gonna handle handle this pick and utilize this. It's like, all right. You know, did fine, I guess, in lane. Did have to flash a few times, but still didn't necessarily go down or get solo killed. But it's like, how are you ever going to be able to find an impact in team fights? How are you going to walk forward on, yep. on this Kinjin who's going to be able to cut you out, on this Aphelios who's going to outrange you? You don't have anything to really enable your movement either. You know, having uh, the Nami down in bot lane so you know you're not going to get like a Shirelia's is going to go towards the mandate. Just it, it felt in terms of draft, BLG set themselves up for success way better. And also, we're way more conscious in terms of what. Uh, JG's win condition was after the one time that Knight did manage to make a play on the Annie. Yeah, rough otherwise outside of that, but as you were saying again, maybe it's just banning the banning the Kindred here is step one for JDG. Or maybe getting themselves a hyper carry for Ruler again, because on this Lucian, Lyric, he did a bit of damage, but what Elk was able to do in that game on the Aphelios, how On was able to set him up, it was just beautiful all around. I mean, even the setup from your gal, you, you can't go talking about BLG success in game two without going through every member. Bin solo kills. Bin's ability to smash on 369 again, who did less damage than a Lee Sin, almost less than a Nami. And everyone just throughout just had this stellar performance where, I don't know, this seems so, such a surprise. I can't believe we're at this state where they're now just taking a game off JDG. And they're in a, in a position to, you know, potentially win this series, right? It's a long way to go. We're only into yep. game number three I coming think, up, but it, it's just nuts. I think coming into the split, I BLG ranked fifth or sixth in terms of how they finished the split, so already outdoing expectations and maybe even able to go further, giving, you know, the first yeah. uh, lease and loss to Kanavi this split, giving the first any loss tonight this split, while they stay undefeated on picks like the Kindred and the Aphelios. Oh, man. Look, What's going to change in Game 3? I think we have to highlight Game 3 draft should be a lot of fun. But hey, BLG even up. We're 